For what purpose, gentleman from Texas rise? Gentleman recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. I, I rise in support of the Istook uh, Amendment. I think this would uh, send a strong message that we do not endorse this war. It was said that this is the same vote that we had last week. But last week's vote is sitting on the table. It's going to sit there. This one may well go someplace and have an effect. So this is a much more important vote than we had last week. It's very important that we vote the same way as we did last week. I think it's interesting. I think we have an interesting uh, constitutional question here. Because I agree with the chairman of the committee and Mr. Obi that uh, it is not the prerogative of the Congress to micromanage a war. That is correct. It is the job of the Congress to declare the war. But here we have a Congress involved in diplomacy and micromanaging a war that hasn't been declared. That is the issue. The issue is in the micromanaging. I can support this amendment because the war has not been declared. The issue is how do you permit the, gov the, the president to wage a war without us declaring the war? Once we declare the war, it is true. We should not be talking about whether or not you use airplanes or foot soldiers or whatever. We do not micromanage. We do not get involved in diplomacy maneuvers. But today, we have things turned upside down. We have the president declaring war and we say nothing, and the Congress micromanaging the war that shouldn't exist. We need to consider that, and we can straighten this mess out by rejecting these funds. It is suggested that this amendment would go a long way to doing it. I'm not all that optimistic. For us to say to the president, thou shalt not use these funds for a ground war, well, he hasn't had the authority to wage his air war. Why would he listen to us now? Could we trust him and say that he's going to listen to what we tell him? Of course not. He's already fighting his air war, and he will continue to. And he has set the standard and not he alone. All our presidents from World War II have set the standard that they'll do what they darn well please. This is why I've been encouraged in the last couple of weeks that this debate has been going on, because it's an important debate. I have finally seen this Congress at least addressing the subject on whether or not they should take back the prerogatives of war and not allow it to remain in the hands of the president. This is very, very good. I have come to the House floor on numerous occasions since February, taking this position that we should not be involved. Matter of fact, we had a couple dozen, maybe three dozen members in this Congress who signed on a bill in February, a, a month or so before we even saw the bombs dropping in Yugoslavia. That would have prevented this whole mess if we would have stood up and assumed our responsibilities. It is said that we must move in now to help the refugees. Have you looked at the statistics? How many refugees did we have before the bombing started? Others say, well, we must move in because Milosevic is so strong. Prior to the bombing, Milosevic was weak. You talk about unintended consequences. They're so numerous. What about the unintended consequence of supporting the KLA who supported by Osama bin Laden. How absurd can it get? You know, Osama bin Laden was our good friend because he was a freedom fighter in Afghanistan and we gave him our weapons and supported him. But then we found out he was not quite so friendly, so we arrested or captured a few of his men and he retaliated by bombing our embassies. Of course, we retaliated by bombing, bombing innocent chemical plants as well as people in Afghanistan that had nothing to do with it. So where are we now? We're back to supporting and working hard and, and, and just deliberating over, should we give weapons to the KLA? I mean, the whole thing is absurd. There's only one thing that we should do, and that is stop this funding and stop the war. You say, oh, no, we're already too far in that we can't. It's not supporting the troops. Well, who wants to come down here and challenge me and say that I don't support our troops? I support our troops. I've served in the military for five years. That is not a worthwhile challenge. We all support our troops. 
And you say, well, no, they're in a quagmire and we have to help them. And this is the only way we can do it. So the president comes and asks us for $6 billion. And in Congress's infinite wisdom, we give them 13. And yet we don't declare war. This appropriation should be defeated. Time of the Jones